Good morning, good day, good afternoon. Welcome to the third part of our webinar series. Uh, today I'm joined by Mr. Uwe Malsan, and we're going to talk about uh, time of flight, taking time of flight measurements to a new level. Um, before I uh, pass over the word to Uwe, I just want to uh, take you through the webinar tool so we can, uh, you can ask uh, questions and uh, use the tool uh, to scroll up the screen and so on. So let me just show you what you have to use here. Uh, first thing is the control panel. You can use the control plan panel by clicking the um, red arrow. You can open and close it. Below there, there is a question and answer box. There you can ask, ask your questions. This question will then be forwarded to the team here uh, who will then rewrite the questions to me so I can read it out and we can go through the Q&A session. You also have two screens. The top screen shows the presenter and the bottom screen shows the actual presentation. Uh, in between you have a um, scroll bar so you can size up and down and see which um, of the two screens you want to have enlarged. Please pay attention to that you should not scroll all the way up or all the way down because then you might lose one of the two screens. So just when you scroll up and scroll down, don't go all the way. Um, that concludes just the, con the control panel and the, the, the sessions that you should have uh, when you will ask questions. So without further notice, I would just to pass on the word to Uwe Malsan to take us through the presentation today. Welcome. Thank you, Henrik. Yes, uh, hello and welcome to our today's webinar on uh, how to generate ultra-short laser pulses for time of flight measurement. The primary application for uh, time of flight measurement is for sure the distance measurement, where you simply uh, measure the time it takes a light pulse to travel back and forth to an object and then calculate the distance from the time you have measured. Other time of flight, LiDAR or 3D scanning applications, basically use the same working principle or a derivative of it. Uh, for instance, scanning a whole scenery with uh, laser pulses and then using a camera type of chip to generate a, a whole picture with distance information associated with each and every pixel. Medical applications do not exactly use time of uh, flight measurement here, but a quite a similar principle, uh, sending out ultra short laser pulses and then receiving back either light or sound as a signal, processing these signals uh, to generate a certain uh, information. If we're talking about time of flight distance measurement, we have to look at two basic uh, principles, indirect and direct time of flight measurement. With uh, indirect time of flight measurement, uh, a pulse train or burst of laser pulses is sent out, usually with a frequency of 20 to 50 megahertz. The phase difference between the sent and received signal is then measured, and from this phase difference, the distance is calculated. The major drawback of this uh, measurement principle is the ambiguity of the measurement because the results repeat after each 360 degrees of phase shift. Um, for instance, at 50 megahertz, this would be three meters. So the measurement results repeat at three, six, nine, and so on meters. Uh, for, so that you cannot distinguish an object being one meter or four meters away. With direct uh, time of flight distance measurement, you simply use a time to digital converter, which is a high resolution stopwatch, to measure the time it takes the laser pulse to travel back and forth from the object. The advantage is at moderate uh, repetition rates, 
you get a, a working distance of about 100 meters without ambiguity. If you then can make the laser pulses quite short, shorter than a nanosecond preferably, you reach a rather high depth resolution. And this is why we want to generate ultra short laser pulses. As mentioned, medical applications is a bit outside of this working principle, but they can also benefit from these short pulses. Hence, uh, I want to uh, take a small look at these. There are, uh, for instance, applications like laser-induced fluorescence to detect certain type of uh, bacteria or um, diffuse optical imaging or photoacoustic imaging, which can be both used to uh, detect cancer. This is how um, photoacoustic uh, imaging works. Uh, the short laser pulses are absorbed by the tissue, cause thermal expansion and the resulting acoustic waves are then detected, processed and formed into an image. Let's have a look at the laser driver principles to generate short laser pulses. The classic approach is simply charging a capacitor with a fairly high voltage and then discharging it with a, a very fast switch into the laser diode. A typical switch could be a gallium nitride transistor, for instance. The high voltage helps to overcome the residual inductance in the laser current path, and hence uh, this principle is allowed to generate short pulses even at quite high laser currents. The downside is the high voltage. High voltages are not welcome in most uh, applications. They require high voltage components uh, and take up a lot of board space. Plus, this driver principle is quite static. The laser pulses are simply what they are. There's no way to change pulse height or pulse width on the fly. You could vary the charging volt voltage a bit, but that's about it. You cannot simply switch the capacitor. With the IC house driver principle, we utilize a voltage controlled current source with a fast switch. With an optimized PC board, for instance, even this principle yields a short rise time and short pulses in the single digit nanosecond range at medium to moderately high laser currents. You don't need a very high voltage. Uh, the whole setup is quite small due to the integrated circuits and the laser pulses are highly scalable, both in terms of amplitude and pulse width. Uh, this, for instance, is a very typical laser pulse generated with one of these nanosecond uh, IC house uh, laser diode drivers. Of particular interest in this case is the initial flash at the rising edge of the laser pulse. And no, this is not a laser current overshoot or anything like that. In fact, the true current rise time with this pulse would be uh, just below one nanos nanosecond. So this is clearly something completely different. In fact, it is a relaxation effect inside the laser diode itself. It happens when the laser diode current crosses the laser threshold and the laser diode switches from spontaneous to stimulated emission. So, Having in mind that we have a fully scalable uh, laser driver, it must be possible to reduce this laser pulse to just a width where only this initial very short gain switching spike uh, remains. 
And indeed, if we take the ICL's laser driver architecture at a scalable on-chip pulse generator with a high resolution, uh, we have the scalable uh, output current, we have the, the fast output driver. If we add this to an optimized uh, PC board, it is indeed possible to squeeze the generated laser diodes to, to a certain width that only this initial gain switching spike remains. As you can see, see if, if we reach this gain switching spike only with the amplitude drops a bit, uh, this could be compensated by increasing the laser, di uh, laser diode current a bit, but not too much, otherwise it could create a second smaller after pulse, and we don't want that. So taking all this and putting this into a single chip, we're talking about the ICHS type of drivers. With these drivers, we have a PLL stabilized on-chip pulse generator with a resolution of 100 picosec, uh, with a uh, pulse width range of 100 picosecond to 5 nanosecond and a resolution of 1 picosecond. We have a, an output driver uh, for up to 500 milliamps, which is divided into three outputs so that you would just choose the amount of drive strength required for your particular laser diode to minimize the capacitance at the output and to ensure fast switching. Additionally, we have a synchronization output, which is also at a, um, scalable in terms of delay, so that you can adjust it exactly to the time when the laser pulse starts to start the stopwatch. The uh, laser current is either uh, set by an external voltage or by the internal uh, digital to analog converter. All the functionality, all setups are fully digitally controlled and set up uh, through an SPI or I2C interface. Now, before we turn to our uh, live demonstration, just a few words on the setup. What, what have we uh, assembled here? It's basically the aforementioned high-speed module with one of the ICHS drivers on it with a blue laser diode uh, mounted onto the host adapter HG2D, which can easily be operated on an uh, optical bench. And as you can see, there's hardly any wiring. This whole system is uh, basically plug and play. Um, so we can plug to this host adapter uh, in this case, two oscillator modules, one for the PLL and one as a trigger source. Uh, then we have an ultra-fast photodetector and our 11 gigahertz oscilloscope. Uh, both the oscilloscope and, of course, the uh, ICHS uh, come with a, 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 a graphical user interface. Uh, as you can see in the background on, on the laptop, uh, on the right-hand side, there's the the controls for the IC, and on the left-hand side, you see the uh, generated oscillogram from the oscilloscope. We can also have a closer look at the modules we've used. This here is the, the high-speed module. Uh, it comes in a small DIL28 white body form. As you can see, here is the, the driver IC, and at the front edge, we have the pads to mount either a TO or SMD type of laser diode. It can then easily be simply plugged onto the host adapter so that all you have to do now is connect the power supply and the USB to SPI adapter for the graphical user interface and also plug in one of the oscillator modules as a trigger source. As you can see, it's basically plug and play. Okay, now then have a look at the live demo. This is 
basically the setup we also use at trade shows. Um, as explained, we have uh, the high speed module here on the host adapter, two uh, oscillator modules on an optical bench, the ultra high speed uh, photo detector and our 11 gigahertz sampling oscilloscope controlled from a GUI here. We, of course, reduced the graphical interface here for demonstration purpose to just one control, a single slider to set the pulse width. As you can see here, that's a quite typical laser pulse here, more or less rectangular with a, a prominent uh, gain switching spike. Uh, if I now reduce the pulse width of the laser current, as you can see, it gets narrower and narrower until only the gain switching spike remains. This is a spike of about 100 picoseconds only. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, just, just in case you think we faked that, I'm gonna break the, the laser beam for you to, to show you that it's really live picture. Yeah, there it is. That's gone. So this is true and really easy to do. Okay, so uh, as could be demonstrated, this setup with uh, one of the ICHS drivers allows very easy generation of ultra short laser pulses uh, of about 100 picoseconds pulse width. And to summarize, ICHS drivers uh, allow ultra short pulse generation for time of flight, distance measurement, or um, certain uh, medical applications. But also uh, the other time of flight applications using indirect uh, time of flight measurement principles uh, can be uh, served by our uh, single nanosecond uh, pulse laser drivers, for instance, from the ICHN or ICHG families. Well, uh, that's all for today. Thanks for joining and uh, back to you, Henrik, for the Q's and A's. Thank you, very good, excellent presentation. So we have uh, quite a few questions okay. so, and we have some time, so let's use that to um, sure. read through the questions. So I'll start immediately with the first question is, what does medium or high operating current mean? Medium and high operating current in terms of the, the uh, nanosecond drivers means we're somewhere in the range of uh, below 10 and up to, let's say, 50 amps. Okay. This can be handled with an integrated circuit on a, on a feasible PC board design. Okay, great. Above that, possibly you have to utilize the classic approach with a high voltage. Okay, understood, thank you. All right, the next question is, uh, will there be a high side switch I see in the HS series, the ICHS series? Uh, difficult to predict. High side architecture uh, has the downside that it is usually slower and mm -hmm. more difficult to control than a uh, uh, low side driver output. This is why we prefer for all fast switching applications the low side driver architecture. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, the next question is, um, how does the gain switch peak behave if the current strength is modulated? Oh, that's a, a really good question. Good question. As I said, if you increase the current too much, the real laser pulse will start to form. Mm -hmm. 
usually it starts with a second smaller after pulse. Okay. This is a sure sign that the laser diode current is too high for this gain switching spike. If you reduce it too much, there's not enough energy stored inside the laser diode to generate this, this flash, it will simply disappear. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, there's a next question here for the applications that need needed for accurate, accurate current, current control. How do you verify the current output of the driver? That is currently not a feature of, uh, of this driver. Um, The, the main purpose is to generate this gain switching spike and it's not directly related to a certain laser current. So, uh, I'm not sure if there, is, in this particular case, uh, if there is a relevance to be able to exactly know or control um, the, the laser current. From my point of view, it has to be calibrated individually. Okay, understood. Okay. Um, which laser diode was used on the HS demo? The demo, it is a, a blue laser diode. I have to look up the type. I don't know it by heart. Okay, then we'll get back to the question here with the sure, details. Okay. Sure, Thank you. Uh, could it also be used for optical TDR application? I'm uh, not familiar with this uh, principle. Probably we can continue this question in a private yeah. conversation. Understood. Okay. Um, next question. What's, what laser diode wavelengths, what detector was used in the demo? Uh, in this demo here, I have to look that up. Um, this is probably just an ultra fast uh, photodiode mm -hmm. with uh, the bias voltage. I have to check that what the, what the colleagues used to assemble the demo. Understood. We will get back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there special requirements for the laser diodes? Can you use it with multi-mode lasers? Does it influence the lifetime? Oh. <laughs> um, there's two parts. Um, we haven't seen so far any, any laser diode that did not sh show this effect. Mm -hmm. um, and the question if this gain switching affects the lifetime is still unanswered even by the laser diode manufacturers. Okay. Um, several years uh, ago, um, it was said that in fact, these type of, of, of uh, flashes would reduce the, 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 the lifetime, but um, actually, my information currently is nobody knows for sure. Okay, understood. Okay, we have more questions. Um, what is the pulse stability in this setup? In terms of... Um, Okay, let's say variables would be uh, power supply, the uh, driver uh, is, is uh, stable in that term. Other um, um, influence is temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, since we're relying on an effect that is um, inside the laser diode, there is, of course, uh, quite a, a temperature dependency of this effect, which cannot be compensated by the driver. Okay. So it may require, depending on the application, on an active temperature control for mm -hmm. both the laser diode and the driver, or a way of uh, evaluating the received signal to decide if uh, pulse width or laser diode card need to be adjusted mm -hmm. to stay in the gain switching range. Okay, good, thank you. We have a couple of more questions. So, uh, what is the maximum number of pulses per second in this setup? Um, the, the ICHS series uh, allows a maximum repetition rate of 200 megahertz, mm -hmm. 
We, of course, here uh, are using quite a, a lower uh, mm -hmm. repetition rate uh, for a uh, low duty cycle and for ice safety, since we're using this uh, at, at trade shows. Understood. Okay. We have more questions, which is great. Um, so, um, what is the maximization pulse width uh, with the driver? For our application, we need up to 10 micron for a TDR measurement. Yeah, well, this driver is particular optimized for the ultra short mm -hmm. uh, pulses. Um, you could use this even for longer pulses than the on chip uh, pulse generator mm -hmm. can, can, can generate, uh, but it kind of contradicts the, the whole architecture. I'm sure for microsecond pulses, uh, there's other drivers in our portfolio from the HK, HN, or so uh, families which could be better suited mm -hmm. for this long pulse uh, applications. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, how critical is the inductivity of the light source package with your circuit? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, inductivity is always critical. Um, so we recommend to shorten the connection between the laser diode uh, and the, uh, the driver to an absolute minimum. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about a few millimeters at the currents we use here, we should be probably fine. Um, can you see this? Yeah. Um, as you can see here, distance from the, the, the mounting pads to the uh, ICs uh, are short. And if you, if you now shorten the leads of a TO package to three millimeters or so mm -hmm. and solder it directly to the board, you're absolutely fine. Okay. Great. Uh, good. We have more questions. Uh, in time delay function, how much resolution is available in this setup? Uh, time delay function for the synchronization output. I think so, it doesn't specify, but... Uh, I have to check, or I can send the data sheet okay. if re required. Okay, great. Good. Um, how much pulse energy can be achieved, typically, with the uh, 500 million? As I said, since the gain switching pike, uh, spike does not directly correlate to the uh, laser current amplitude, that's difficult to say, because um, if, you, if you have a look here at our uh, uh, laser pulse, <clears throat> this amplitude here is defined by the laser current, mm -hmm. because this is the actual uh, laser pulse. There's a re relation between laser current and optical output. This here, is something that's defined by the laser diode. You can um, reduce or increase this gain switching spike to a certain uh, extent by the current rise time. Mm -hmm. As a rule of thumb, the shorter the time when you cross the laser threshold, the more prominent the gain switching spike is. So you could actually suppress the gain switching spike by making the rise time of the laser current quite slow. Okay. Then it will disappear. Understood. Yeah. Great. Uh, I have one last question. Uh, what is the effect of longer laser di diode leads on the pulse shape? Uh, in, in general, uh, longer leads uh, at uh, uh, inductance, making rise and fall times slow or may even cause oscillation of the laser current. Mm -hmm. And as I said, a too slow rise time may make the, the gain switching spike vanish at all. Um, or, depending on the, on, the, on the desired pulse width, makes the nice rectangular uh, laser pulse into a triangular one 
with a reduced amplitude, for instance. So um, this is what I, what I uh, said earlier. It takes an optimized PC board layout, mm -hmm. optimized wiring to achieve fast switching from a moderately high uh, supply voltage. Okay, great. We actually have more questions, so that's good. Uh, let's move on. Um, what diode voltage is better suited for this driver? 3 volt or 5 volt? Lower or higher? Um, that's a good question. Um, Usually, when we when we operate these these uh, drivers, we have found if if you don't have a, a, a blue or direct green laser diode, five volts to do the trick perfectly, mm -hmm. because uh, you need always a, a bit of overhead uh, on the supply voltage. Um, so let's say uh, uh, visible red, infrared um, should work quite nicely at five volts. And for blue and uh, direct green, it probably takes up to eight or nine volts of supply voltage for the laser diode. The IC itself takes five volts. So higher in principle. For the shorter wavelengths, it takes a higher. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, that actually, I think, was the last question. And I really want to thank the audience for making a lot of questions to us. It's very good. It's good to have an interactive session. And uh, Uwe is also willing to take questions on email. Sure. And if and the follow-up questions as well will be answered by email. So really appreciate you guys taking the time with us to go through the presentation. And uh, before we close, I just want to make sure that you know that we're going to have a couple of more webinars coming up in the autumn. So please stay tuned for more of these sessions. We will uh, have at least two or three sessions in, in the autumn and we look forward to hosting you again. So on that note, I would like to thank you for participating and thank you, Uwe, for a very good presentation and look forward to see you soon again. Bye thank bye. you. Bye and stay safe. Bye bye.